Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Joe. Come and be his guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. Here's our lady MD. She's as pretty as can be at the junction. Petticoat Junction. Of course not. Now you go ahead and knock them dead. Now, what is this act you're doing again? Oh, well, we're not really doing it yet. We're just sort of auditioning it for the Founders' Day Committee. Well, that's just a formality. You'll kill them. Uh, you haven't even seen us. What do you mean I haven't seen you? Well, you're the greatest. You're positively the world's finest. Uh, uh, what is it that you're doing, singing or dancing? Well, positively the world's finest singer and dancer. <laughs> that's what I like. A completely unbiased critic. Have a good time. <laughs> You see, it was all my idea. Your idea? Yes, and what well, we were trying to do was trust an outsider to barge in and upset tradition. Upset tradition? You mean put a little life on a pretty dull occasion. Dull occasion? It is the anniversary of the founding of Hooterville by my late husband's great-great-uncle Cyrus Clout. Who was a pretty dull fella, if you ask me. Nobody did. <laughs> and Mr. Carson. If your lodge intends to stage the ceremonies this year, they'd better pay more attention to the dignity of the occasion. Selma, if there's one thing the camels has got, it's dignity. Oh? Running around in their silly little humps. <laughs> silly little humps? Oh, look, please let me explain. You see, my idea was to dramatize musically the span of time, a sort of then and now idea. Now, what you just saw exemplifies then, following which we intend to present... Ready, Janet. Put on the record.
see the rest of it? I don't want to see anything more. This whole thing is an insult to great, great Uncle Cyrus. And as for you, how dare you stand there? Go make yourselves decent. <laughs> Hold it right there, Selma. These are my girls, and nobody comes to my house and tells them they're not decent. And if you don't like it, get out! <laughs> I, I, I... The door is that way. <laughs> Uncle Joe, I'm proud of you. Oh, you were just fine. Yeah, Joe, you were all right. You spoke right up to her. <laughs> Thanks, Uncle Joe. Good to have you on our side. Who says? What? Who says I'm on your side? You just sabotaged Founder's Day. Uncle Joe? Oh, go make yourself decent. Doggone it. What do you suppose happened? Oh, he just blew a fuse. No, it's the old story. Don't anyone else criticize my family. If it's going to be done, I'll do it. I must say, I kind of admire him for that. Mm, yeah, I guess so. Well, I suppose we're back to the same old founder ceremony, if we even have one after all this. Dear, I've really done it, haven't I? No, no, you were just trying to help, that's all. And you were doing a darn good job, too. Have you any idea what the regular founder ceremony is? No, I've never seen one. Well, it's supposed to commemorate the historic event of Selma's late husband's great-great-uncle Cyrus planting Founder's Oak. And, of course, all his great words of wisdom are always recited. And then uh, Henrietta, that's Selma's daughter, jumps out of the covered wagon and kisses the good old earth. Oh, that sounds exciting. <laughs> well, I have a very low threshold of excitement. <laughs> what is it that you want us to do, Janet? You don't say you want us to give up the act. Uh-oh. That is what you're going to ask us to do, isn't it? Well, does it really mean that much? Would you mind so much dropping it in the interest of harmony? You mean just forget about all the hours we spent rehearsing? Well, Dave's making the costumes. Well, Bobby Joe, what do you think? I see. Oh, look, we realize that there are two sides to every question, but why is it that it always has to be the young people who give in when something like this comes along? Yay! <laughs> what do you mean? Well, just that while we respect our elders, we think that we should be given some consideration, too. Yay! <laughs> Most everything in the valley is run by the older people. And I suppose that's okay, because they've earned it. But somewhere along the line, there's got to be room for us. And if there is, and we're asked to participate, we feel that we should be allowed to do things our own way. Yay! You know something, Billy Joe? You're terrific. You ought to give talks. <laughs> well, maybe you should give talks. Well, anyway, I'm on your side. I'll see what I can do about it. Okay, fellas, take your seat. Call a meeting of the Royal Order of Camels, Chapter 635 to order. Well, Sam, you see if the curtain's drawn tight. Sam, I'm speaking to you. Brother Carson, aren't you forgetting when we're dressed in our royal camel robes, we're to be referred to as brothers? <laughs> well, Brother Drucker, would you see if the curtain's drawn tight? <laughs> yes, Brother Carson. Now, you know this is one of our most super secret meetings. As tonight, we're taking Wendell, uh, Brother Gibbs, through the sands of time so that he may reach that lofty pyramid where he, too, may enjoy the rights and privileges of a two-hump camel. <laughs> now, before we start the ceremonies, we must clear up the business part of the meeting. Yes, Brother Drucker. Uh, Brother Carson, what about the Founders' Day Festival? Is our lodge still going to handle the program? Yes, Brother Drucker. And are we still going to enact the historic event of Cyrus Plout planting the Founder's Oak? Since we promised Mrs. Selma Plout that we would, I think the lodge should stick by its word. All those in favor signify by giving the sign of the camel. 
<laughs> Brother Gibbs. Yes, Brother Carson. At this point in your life's life, you are not privileged to give the two hump sign. Sorry, Brother Carson. <laughs> and now, on with the ceremony. Brother Drucker, keeper of the sands of time. <laughs> Brother Gibbs, will you please rise? And as you reach the great oasis of life, do you solemnly swear to... Excuse me, gentlemen, but I... Don't look! Don't look! <laughs> Sorry. This was supposed to be a secret meeting. How did you find out we were here? Well, I read the notice on your bulletin board, Mr. Drucker. Damn, you stupid dunderhead. I mean, Brother Drucker, you stupid dunderhead. Why did you do such a thing? Well, the notice wasn't for the general public. I put on it attention members of the Royal Order of Camels. This is a grave situation, fellow members. No outsider is ever supposed to see us in our ceremonial robes. It means bad luck. The oasis will be dry for seven years. Oh, I'm sorry, gentlemen, but I wanted the chance to talk to you while you're all together. How will we ever right this wrong? Oh, I know. Why don't we make her a member of the Royal Order of Camels? Brother gives you nothing. There's no such thing as a lady camel. <laughs> oh, but I beg to differ. At the zoo, I saw a baby camel, and therefore I assume... Brother Gibbs. At least I think it was a baby camel. Then again, it could have been a pony or even a sheep. Brother Gibbs. Oh, no sheep go blah, and I never heard a single blah the whole time I was there. Of course, with all the noise from the merry-go-round. Brother Gibbs. Yes, Brother Carson. There ain't gonna be no lady camel in our lodge. Merely a suggestion. Now, Doc, you remember when you came in here, you didn't see a thing, did you? No, I didn't see a thing. You, you didn't see the sands of time, or the oasis of life, or the Great Pyramid. Well, why don't you show her our secret handshake, and then she'll know the whole ritual. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gentlemen, you need have no worry about my divulging any of your lodge secrets. Now, in return for this, how about giving me a little cooperation? Anything, Doc. Well, regarding the young people and their dance number for the Founders Day program, I want all you lodge members to back me up on this. Sorry, Doc. Anything but that. Now, hold it just a second, Joe. Sam, we went through all of that. We decided we were going to do it just like it had always been done. Oh, Joe, we can still do that. But this is an opportunity to include the young people, and I think they should be considered. Well, I go along with you, Doc. Brother Drucker, you're not speaking for the lodge. Well, I got a hunch I am. What do you think, Brother Gibbs? Well, I'm yes and no on the matter. Maybe and maybe not. Brother Gibbs, will you give me a straight answer? Yes, Brother Brother. Well, then answer me. How do you stand? I'm pro and con. Great. How do all the rest of you good brothers feel about it? Hold it, hold it. As Grand Royal Potentate, I'm going to settle this thing once and for all. I decree we do the Founders Day program just as we have in the past, and that's that. Well, if that's the way it's going to be, I've had it. I'm not even going to take part. I'm going to have it. Now, hold it, fellas, hold it. <laughs> See what you did? See what you did? I did. It happened just as I predicted when you came in here. The oasis of life has gone dry, and we're in for seven years of bad luck. <laughs> Mama, Mama! Henry had a plowed. Are you trying to make me swallow these pins? Sorry, Mama. I just wanted to ask a question. What is it? May I? No. Mama, you didn't even let me ask. That's not the American way. All right. We'll do it the American way. What is the question? May I change costume? No. Is that fun? Not really. Mama, why do I have to wear these clothes and kiss the good earth every Founder's Day? Because it is traditional. And these are the clothes the women wore in great, great Uncle Cyrus's day. Why don't I dress like his girlfriend? His what? His girlfriends. You know, like in the old album. What old album? The one I found in the attic. 
Lady friends. See, it says Cyrus Plout presents 20, count them, 20 curvaceous cuties. And look what they're not wearing. Henrietta, that is a no-no. This is not the official family album. But I found it in the attic. That's why it was in the attic. Now this is the official album. The, the old covered wagon. Oh, and the founder's oath. Oh, and dear Uncle Cyrus. And the other one, he's smiling. Do you suppose it's because of the 20 curvaceous cuties? Never mind. Oh, I'll get it, Mama. Oh, Dr. Craig. Well, that's wonderful. Isn't it, Mama? <laughs> Thank you, Henrietta. Hello, Selma. Oh, how do you do, Doctor? We were just trying on Henrietta's costume for the festival. Oh, searching, isn't it? Very authentic, I suppose. To the last stitch. I'm sure it is. Only... Well, only what? Well, it isn't very flattering. Well, it's not supposed to be. I guess not. But it seems a shame to conceal such a graceful figure as Henrietta's. Henrietta? <laughs> Very nice features, and you move gracefully. Hasn't anyone ever told you that? Well, I'm telling you now. <laughs> uh, doctor, I'm sure you didn't come here to tell me that my daughter is some sort of sex symbol. Oh, Mama. No, I didn't. I came to ask if you would Because please. I definitely do not care for that sort of thing. I never allowed myself to become a sex symbol. Well, I'm sure you didn't. <laughs> I mean, that's admirable of you. Uh, yes. And, of course, you know how I feel about the abbreviated skirts the Bradley girls wanted to wear. Oh, disgrace. <laughs> uh, oh, what was it you wanted to ask? Oh, well, um... Oh, I wanted to ask uh, what you're going to wear in the festival. Oh, really? Oh, I'll show you. And don't go away. <laughs> that wasn't really what you wanted to ask, was it? No, it wasn't. What was it? You won't tell on me. Well, I wanted to ask, I know it's a forlorn hope, but I wanted to ask if she would change her mind about the Bradley girls doing their act in the festival. There's no chance of that, I suppose. Gosh, no. Mama won't even let me look at great-great-uncle Cyrus's chorus girls. Really? <laughs> chorus girls? Twenty, count them, twenty. <laughs> Uncle Cyrus? You mean he did something more than plant a founding oak? We did not say anything more. How do you know this? Tell me. I can't. And don't look under the sofa cushion. <laughs> the other one. <laughs> Uncle Cyrus, <laughs> saloon keeper. Cyrus Plout presents 20. Count them, 20 curvaceous cuties. <laughs> Whoa. practical, I guess. Very. But you'll never be one of Uncle Cyrus's curvaceous cuties with that. Well, I should hope. What? That's what I found. Oh, no. <laughs> well, what are you going to do about it? Nothing. I trust that you are every bit as broad-minded as I am, Selma. What do you mean? Only that it takes a very generous and broad-minded person to change her mind about the Bradley girl's appearance in the festival. Oh? And I would have to match that generosity by forgetting that I ever heard about Uncle Cyrus and his 20, count them, 20 curvaceous cuties. <laughs> That's blackmail. Yes, by George, I believe it is. <laughs> well? Oh, all right. I'll make some tea. Oh, I hate to be beaten. <laughs> Tell me, pretty maiden, are there any more at home like you? There are a few kind sir, but simple... Hold it, hold it, everybody. Here comes... 
comes trouble. Selma Plout? Might have known she wouldn't hold out for long. I could have sworn she seemed so agreeable. That's when she's the most dangerous. You ever seen her smile? Like a barracuda. <laughs> Selma! What a pleasure. Oh, Selma, what can we do for you? You haven't changed your mind. You know, Doctor, I told you I hate to be beaten. So? So, if you can't lick them, join us! <laughs> Selma, baby, you're in. I'm going to sing every note to you. Tell me, pretty maiden, are there any more at home like you? There are a few kind sirs, but simple girls and proper too. Then tell me, pretty maiden, what these very simple girlies do? star in the wartime thriller, Ambush Bay. Now, stay tuned for Green Acres, next, here on TV 39. 